Hey everybody, David here. We're back. And yes, this is going to be interesting. I just was reading what you guys were saying about this. And this is a very interesting um, composition that we're going to have here. And so we're going to be doing a little bit of abstract in our work today and a little bit of realism. So a little bit of both. And this is called Circle, um, circle of Confusion Circles we're putting on here. So it's a little bit into the abstract in a way. And so I thought it was just something different. I really liked the photo when I looked at this. And so we're going to see what we can do. And um, I don't have a beer tonight. <laughs> I couldn't, I didn't have anything in the house. So I'm just going to have to say cheers, everybody, because I have nothing to, um, uh, that never happened before, but um, it happens once in a while. Okay. And so we're just going to go right into this. And um, actually, the one I did this afternoon was a very good lesson on what not to do. <laughs> so um, we definitely, the class today, really noticed that we were guinea pigs. Um, they really, we had a, um, we we're at big discussions on how we're doing this and, and I'll show you in a second how we did it. And so let's go to my website first at davidrbecker.com or beckerart.net to find out everything. And again, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, just go down here, down on the bottom here, right there. You sign it up for right in that area, get rid of this little line right there. And so this is the spot right here where you sign up for my newsletter. They get it every Tuesday to find out what we're painting or just come to my website here and um, you can just see what we're doing. And also people are asking me if they can find old, old uh, newsletters. Yes, right here. Archived Becker Art Float Your Pigment Newsletters. Go right here, click on that button right there and you can see all the newsletters, all 400 and something of them that I put out there already. <laughs> I think it's like 400 and something um, that I've been putting out. So we've been doing this for quite a long time. And hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's go over to our supply list. And here's what we're using again. Holbein paints, my brushes are which are Holbein. And we're going to use Stonehenge Aqua Paper. We also are using stencil today, and which I don't have down there. Uh, and we're going to, yeah, we'll use a stencil and a, and a um, the sponge. I forgot what they call those sponges. I'll remember by the time we get to it. <laughs> so let's go right to our value study. And our value study is very important. Again, we've been talking about the last four weeks. We got away from that now, the no tan. Now, I was making it black and white. Now, I didn't make this black and white. I did use some grayscale here. But now I want you to kind of understand and see what I see. And so if you're looking at this and you're looking at the color version. And um, so if I'm looking at this, all the where's our light and where's our dark, right? And so basically, all the little circle of confusion circles are my light. And a little bit of the sky is my light. The sky and the circle of confusion are light and everything else is dark. Very simple composition. Very simple. So it makes these circle of confusion circles really important because it makes it part of the composition. And so it's not just a bunch of bubbles or a bunch of um, gleaming lights. And this is what happens when you take a camera. And this, I did not do this. This was taken by a photographer and they, the, the lighting of whatever it may you're shooting through. I couldn't quite tell how they did this, but... It's kind of abstract in a way, and so it's kind of interesting that the camera depth of field, it blurs the little dots, you know, they're in Paris and probably little French lights, you know, and, um, and they blur it, and so it becomes these round little circles of light. And so that is basically part of our composition, So which is the, which is the light part of our composition. Now, let me just show you what we did wrong at the, in this afternoon. And one of them was not to follow my value pattern. And here I've been talking about it for how many weeks now I've been talking about no tan. And so here I was so worried about these colored lights that I stopped thinking about the value pattern. You know, and so, okay, it even happens to me. And so let's go to our tabletop and I'll show you. So here's what we did. Um, this afternoon and do you see what's wrong with it? Yes, it's the value pattern is way off. There's no value pattern. Matter of fact, some of these circles are darker than the background and um, a lot of them are different colors than the background, which is kind of good, but they don't make it look like they're lights then. They just look like little balloons flying in the sky. So that didn't work out so well. So we learn and we learn a lot. And also my drawing of my Eiffel Tower got really thick because I went around it I went around and then I went back and I was just, I made it messy. I made a messy um, um, Eiffel Tower and look how fat it got, you know, and it's really a slender, nice, beautiful Eiffel Tower. It's part of your center of interest. This is, you know, the Eiffel Tower is your interest in the painting. So I'm going to go through this time. 
even though it is going to be a lot darker because look at this area right here and here didn't get dark enough and so it doesn't give the glow of light this is like the middle of the day and in the middle of the day with balloons flying in the air which could be also a good thing i have to put a little little strings on them maybe <laughs> and so it's just you know we all do mistakes we all do them and you know and hopefully tonight it'll get much better and it always does every time you know i feel bad bad for the students because they're made definitely my guinea pigs and we all talked about it and stuff but um we'll make it better than this and it's follow the value pattern four weeks i've been talking about that and so what do i do <laughs> i go right off of it and next thing you know i don't do the value pattern right okay so here we go here's my drawing and i don't draw any of the circles in there because i will be using a circle template I, I made this one myself with a with an exacto knife that was on a compass, and so um, that you, know, you may not have. But um, if you take a, some kind of maybe a shot glass or you know something round and just make a line, and then take an exacto knife and go slowly and just cut out a plastic. They would even sell plastic um, or um, stencil paper like at Hobby Lobby. You can get it at Michaels. You can get this like. Um, you know, or find a little thin sheet of paper or um, a plastic. You can do that. Um, you can even cut out a um, like thin cover stock. You can only use it a couple times though because it is paper. But um, and you don't want to get it too wet. But that's what I'm going to be using later for these making these circles. And I'll show you how to do that with the magic eraser. That's why I wanted. To, I forgot about what they call them, magic eraser. So boy, it's so weird not toasting you guys. I really am mad that I don't have I didn't have any drinks in the house. There was nothing in the house, and I didn't have time to go out and get something. So, cheers for ten. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see who's all here. Hey, everybody! <laughs> way way too many. We gotta get going here. Oh yeah, plastic report cover that can work good, or like um. The plastic um, folders that um, they have in school, they may have a little plastic on them, the front cover of um, a folder. You know, uh, you can do that. You just cut it out. And you're going to cut out circles. And um, we didn't even try to do stencils because these are circles of confusion. That's actually what they call them, circle of confusion circles. And so what are we going to do? We're going to do our lights first. Now, since <laughs> this is kind of weird, this is the reason I think I did this wrong, is because my lights are... The circles right and so i'm gonna kind of i didn't put the color in of this red first because we're gonna make the circles with the stencils and then we'll make the color in that that didn't work out so well <laughs> so i'm gonna do my lights to dark uh middle tones right away and put a little bit of this red in there but i'm gonna leave it for when i put the stencils and put a little bit a lot lighter more of a tint in there so i will wet the whole surface I'll start out with wetting the whole surface. And then you notice I didn't go around the Eiffel Tower this time because I did, and I screwed up the whole background by trying to go really close close to it. If I just wipe it out enough to make it light with the light, because it is a dark, it's part of my dark, even though it's got orange and light in there, I can rub that out while it's still damp and wet. So I'm gonna wet everything nice and evenly. I'll just wet it. Take my big brush, my one and one quarter inch brush, wet everything really nice and even. And now I am going to start with my lights. You know, I'm going to get some light blues in there. And I noticed that I didn't, all I used was blue in this one. I didn't use any other colors. Look at it, it's just solid blue, light blue. And, you know, look at all the color in that picture. And so, and um, so this time we're going to put in a little bit of lavender, you know, a little purple, a little light blue, you know, and have some fun with the sky and make it much darker. So make it 20% darker than you think it should be. It should look 20% darker than you want it to be so that when it dries, it'll dry perfectly to whatever you want it to be, which is not that light. <laughs> so a little bit of blue and make it a fun sky because it is not all clean and, and um, solid, stiff, you know. I know there's the um, pinkish, yellowish, orangey circles. But we'll be rubbing this out, and then we'll put that little, little bit of that color in. Not not as much as we did in the last time. Otherwise, it doesn't look like it looks like again balloons. It'll look like balloons, and not what I want it to look like. And that is lights. It's a little bit of violet. Have fun with the background. You know, spatter it, do whatever. Just get in there and have a fun background. I love doing that with um, skies and getting a lot of pigment in there and. 
And when I get down here, I will put a little bit of the orange or reddish color in there because when I do the circle, then it'll kind of make it that color, a little bit lighter of that color. These, I can't really do that because you'll see. Otherwise, it'll just turn, if I put some yellow in there, that'll turn green for one. And so I'm just gonna go with the dark parts of the, of the blue first and purples. And you know what, I can, let's try a little bit of the, what happens if I put orange in here? You think that'd be weird? Let's see. You know, when I, when I saw this picture, I thought to myself, this is a really neat picture, right? And so I've never done something like this before. I've never done an abstract kind of looking image. Well, I've done abstracts before, but not together with like a regular painting underneath it. And so it's like, we're all learning together. You know, I'm learning as much as you're learning. And I actually learned a lot this afternoon when we did it wrong. And um, so each time you do it, you learn more and more. So a little bit darker in the corners. I notice up here, there's a little bit darker, really dark over here. And really dark over here. So I'm going to be a thicker pigment, thicker pigment. And it's going to dry a lot lighter. Now, I was thinking about maybe, what if you do this and make circles, like turn your brush around and make a circle like this. Like, you know, you can go like this and just circle your brush. And I was wondering if that would work a little bit in trying to do some of that, you know, just so that it kind of has that feeling of circles. I'm just turning my brush a little bit. Actually, this paper is a little bit something. Maybe put a little bit of this um, orange right down the middle here. Put that right in there right away. It can be nice and thick. It won't bleed that far. It'll make the Eiffel Tower look nice and bright with nice colors. And again, if you're out there and you've never um, been to one of my paint-alongs, um, ask questions if you want, anytime. Put them down there. I look up once in a while and see if I can't answer them. Here, I'm again, just putting a little bit... I'm spending a little bit more time now trying to make it darker and really trying to make the sky look interesting. And I love the spatter. I notice that right in here, there's a really, there's really nice light, really light blues, like a really light blue next to really dark blues. And then in the water, let's put some really dark, this whole area is dark down here. So I'm going to put some of that in there right away. Though I have to leave some of this area a little bit lighter. So I'm going to be going with my middle tones here now. Maybe a little bit of warmth through here. And I also want to get this color of orange through there because last time it didn't look so good. And so I'm going to actually put this orange part that will then be the circles. I'm actually doing that right away, just putting that color in there. And then I will negative paint some of the dark parts of that too. There's some nice blues down here. I'm going into horizon blue. That's what this blue is. Hey, Linda, Pamela, Marianne, Barbie, Sherry. Hello from Tennessee. All right. So we're going to go through here. Again, this is a little bit darker. Now look at that. I put this really thick purple. I actually picked up a little bit too much. But that's okay. Yeah, I can always tone it down a little bit. Go right through here. I want to, again, I want a fun background that I would then later on be able to take and make the circles out of and it's got to be dark enough so that they they shine and that's what I didn't do last time so I'm just gonna really try to focus my attention on that that I get it dark enough this time the hair in there some of this is drying already so I gotta make sure I, I really like that light blue down here so let's just get the light blue go right through here get some of that light blue this, of course, is all dark. This down here is really dark, so let's get a little bit more of that violety blue. This is really dark down here and up into this area. I'll keep it a little bit. Again, I'm keeping that warm because I want those um, circles of confusion to be a little bit more orange. Let's make this a little bit more orange. Put some circles in there. They're dark now. I know they're dark now, but 
it'll affect it later on. And this is very abstract looking right now, but this is a good thing because really the only thing that's going to be um, really tightly done is the circles and the Eiffel Tower and a little bit of this stuff in here, but that's not even that important because the circles are more important. That's the part of the center of interest right in here. This part of the Eiffel Tower and that all area is going to be the center of interest. And, oh, I don't have a, oh yeah, I have a spray bottle. I'm going to take a spray this up a little bit because it's starting to dry a little bit. So I'm taking my mister. I'm just spraying that a little bit. I mean, it's very important to get a really nice first wash on this one because it's all about that first wash and making it look really good. Because later on, I'll be scrubbing these little circles out of there. And it takes a while, and I probably will have to use my hair dryer because it's going to be... Let's get so there's a little bit of orange in there. Let's get a little bit of orange in this part, too. So I'm just taking red and pushing... I'm putting water down and I'm pushing the pigment around. And this is one thing I like about the Stonehenge paper is that it doesn't absorb as much as the um, arches does because then I, if it's sitting on top, it's not going into the paper so much that I can't just put another color right on top of it, a lighter color matter of fact, and it just kind of pushes it away, separates it, brings it back up, and then just you can go right in there, put a little bit of that in there, a little bit of orange, a little bit of blue together wet it and then just have fun with it a little bit of violet and purple i think it's a little bit more it's a little bit more looking much better this time a little bit darker not so light a little bit more in the different colors i just didn't use light blue this time it really is kind of fun doing the second thing you know the second second time the painting and I used to never like to do that ever I hated doing second paintings or twice but I'm actually enjoying it because I learned so much from the first one you know I never did this before I never did this kind of this kind of painting before so you know it's, it's good to learn because you just try what, what can I do to make it look like that with this or might make it look good now this right while this is still while this is still wet I'm again coming through here pick up um observant absorb some of the paint get it light and then put some i'm gonna put some orange in there to light up the eiffel tower and that's the light part of it that's the color part of it and so then later on when i put the dark because it's really a dark it's probably my dark area and it's against the light and um and also it has some nice beautiful color in it that makes you look at it because my orange dots and stuff will be kind of complement to it I'm hoping you all understand again how, how important that value study is. And I actually almost proved it by doing this this afternoon. And look at how light that is compared already. You know, it's a, it's a totally turnaround, you know, this afternoon. I could, while this is still a little wet, I could put in some of this dark right away because this could be dark for the um, edges of the trees. So why don't I do that right away too? And so I'm just going to take my round brush. It's still a little damp, and so I'll get some soft edges. And for this back here, I'll use a little bit of um, Prussian blue, make it a little green by adding a little bit of Kronecardum gold. Look how green that gets. And then I will put a little purple in there to get rid of the, the brightness of the green. And I'm going to go in here, it's still wet, and I get some soft edges of these little trees back here. I know this is kind of going into my step two, which this is my lights, basically. This is my lights going into my step two at the same time, getting my mediums. There's my mediums, and now I'm getting my my darks, my bigger darks. Even though it is kind of detail-y, but um, this is pretty much my step two. Step three is the hard edge darks and the lights, and so we'll get to that later. Um, right now, again, we're getting big areas, and it's soft-edged, and so I'll just go in here, get a little of this stuff done. Otherwise, I have to wait for it to dry, and it, why not get some soft edges while it's while it's drying? And um, I can almost fake some of these. Um, I didn't, I didn't draw in the circle of confusion circles, but that doesn't mean I can't look at the picture and copy what I see up there with my lights and darks. And then I can put the circle template over that. And over here is a nice dark. I use Prussian blue, a little black, a little um, permanent violet, 
to make my really dark darks. And then there's a bunch of little things back here, like houses and um, I, or, or maybe backs of trucks. I don't even know what that is. It's hard to see, but if you just make rectangular shapes back there, that's fine. And this is actually too light. And so let's put a little bit of a wash over that. I do like it that it's reflecting some of the lights, the warmthness. So that's okay. I don't mind that. Just I don't want it too light. This is part of my dark now. The, remember, the lights are going to be my, my circle of confusions. Hey, Karen. Hey, Linda. And so let's go on this side now. Do the same thing. Just I'm picking up my three. I have my Prussian blue, black, and permanent violet. Make it really, really dark, dark. And if I want to make it green, I just add in a little bit of Krenakinum gold. And so over here, we're just going to do some trees. Even though there are no trees on this side, it doesn't look like it. It looks like there just there's a wall here or something. And um, so I'm just going to do the outer edge here. There is a little bit of trees on this side here. The Eiffel Tower itself will be really dark here. And um, you might as well do it right away. Oh, what the heck? You know, I'll, I'll put a little half circle here. And then just kind of... I mean, when I say step one, step two, and step three, sometimes they can come together all in one wash because if I'm working it, I'm just, my lights are done already, except for the, the lights that I'm going to have to throw about. And that's a kind of a different situation where I'll be getting them back. And so rubbing out, it means you get your lights back. And so this is my middle tones and my lights. And so I'm into my, basically step one and step two together. And if you haven't been in my class here and you've always, you're wondering what I'm talking about, is that I do all my paintings in three steps. I do them first with my lights and I establish my colors with my lights. And then step two is my medium, large medium and large darks. And then step four, three, <laughs> wow, step four, no. Step three then is my final details, my um, dark details and my light details. And so I'm gonna go in here, get some nice darks in here. And I will also rub out some of the lighting. That's I don't like the lighting that's right on the edge here of the paper in the photo. So I'm gonna um, oh, I move that over. There we go. And so um, we'll do the Eiffel Tower kind of coming down here, make it look like water. It's a little bit darker over here, and I'm just gonna make little little lines that make it look like water. Prussian blue, black, violet. Cranicum gold, make it a little bit of green. Look at how green it got all of a sudden. And um, I, I, again, I'm going to pull out some light in here later on. So I'm basically pulling out my lights by rubbing them out. And I'm going to use a stencil and also just the brush to get those things out. Now it looks like I have to wait for it to dry. And so I may use my little hair dryer here real quickly. Let me just look at this real quickly. Any questions? Boy, I'm really thirsty. I wish I had a beer. <laughs> I'm getting so used to it that I didn't have one today. I'm really, I'm really bummed. <laughs> I was going to run out. There's a thing, but I wouldn't have gotten anything. There's I, nothing special. Nothing. There was nothing that I could have gotten that was different than I've already drank. There's a little, yeah, we'll go this a little bit darker right here. A little bit of warmth. You can put that into the dark right away. This is my center of interest, so I want to make this a little bit more, you know, maybe the, maybe negative paint some of the half circles in there. I mean, it looks weird, but this is why I could think of doing this, because the last time I made it all dark, and I tried to pull it up, and it just didn't have a feel of, like you can see. And they all went together, they all came together, and so it just was like balloons. And so I wanted to make more of that area that color and then i can put some of the blue back into it and make it look because these 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 circle of confusions have to look like they're transparent they can see through them and these you don't they don't see through them and i could still do that but this is a lost cause and it helped me out a lot i mean it helped me out a lot but that's what it was for and it was done on a sheet of paper that was anyways just um a scrap sheet of paper so <laughs> so we'll go on and let me just get my where's my Oh, here you are, right behind me. Sorry about that. So I do have my um, 
power stripper, but I use this because it's quieter than um, a, and it's really hot, but if I hold it farther enough away, it'll dry it real quickly. Let me just turn the sound off for just for a second and we'll be right back. All right. And we're back and so dry enough and so what's my last thing to do is my details my dark details uh, we got everything large darks large mediums um, step one we got our lights and our colors and so we're at step three and the final step and that would be the details and so what is detail the Eiffel Tower of course and of course we have to do that first before we do the circles again because the circles everything's got to be totally dry and I'll show you how to do that and so now I'm using my my rigger brush and I'm just going to go in here with really dark colors basically almost black you can use I, I like to use a little bit of color in there though like a little purple a little bit of black a little bit of blue Prussian blue permanent violet and I'm just going to bend over here and start drawing drawing the Eiffel Tower in and you can get it as tight as you want you decide on how tight you want to make this but this is um, detail stage step three and um, this is where, you know, the circle of confusion is like when you're doing stencils, it's, you never know, because you could direct the whole painting with the stencil, and which I did this afternoon, but hey, you know, it's all about learning. It's all about learning, trying new things. And so here are the nice little details of the Eiffel Tower. And, and see how I'm just basically drawing it detailed, nice and dark. I can put a little bit of warmth in there too. Here and there, I can put a little warmth. And now the line work, I'm gonna leave that for a second, uh, leave that alone. I'm just gonna go and get the bigger darks. And right down the center of the Eiffel Tower, there's this dark where the elevators go up. And so we're just gonna make that a little bit darker. I'm not putting in the grill work yet. It's a little bit more wet. And I'm just really quickly going across it so it's not just so perfectly um, dark. I want to have a little bit of so that there's a lot of gr um, iron work in this so I don't have to make it all really solid colors and actually some of these are going to be light vexes and stuff that they have but again I want to go for the big stuff first and so let's get our um, quarter inch brush here quarter inch brush to get the bigger darks now as I'm going down and this painting shouldn't take you long except for how many it all depends on how many of the of the X's and also how many of the circles you put in circles of confusions there there it's a it's a long thing is this different than the Boken effect no that's I think they're both the same thing I think it's the Boken effect and circle of confusion are the same same thing same exact thing I think they just call it differently for others some people call it Boken some people call it circle of confusion but yeah, it's the same effect, same exact effect. Here again, detail, detail. Larger details come first though. Make sure you get the first. Hey Dave, welcome. And as I go down here now, I'm just gonna do the edge. And I drew it a little bit tighter um, this time around than this afternoon so that I have a little bit more, um, you know, I think I drew it too fat too. And so check your drawing, check your drawing. Your drawing is the number one most important thing is your drawing. So make sure your drawing is right and then draw it on nicely and then paint it to your drawing. You know, as you can tell, this, my drawing was not on. Like, look at how, how, um, <laughs> how fast I went. And it was just too big, my lines, and it was not drawn right. And so, it just was not a, um, a good afternoon when it came to getting my details and stuff. And I, I went too fast, I think, too. And, and not knowing exactly what to do sometimes is also a thing. Because if you're just kind of 
searching to think, okay, how am I going to do this? And will this work or will this work? And that was kind of the way it was because we didn't quite know how to handle these circles and make them look transparent. And I think they looked more like balloons when we got done, which is okay, but it doesn't, doesn't look like circle confusions or boken. So here, see how nice that um, is coming out now? And we're just getting these nice darks in here. We can also put a little bit of light in there, like the orange, a little bit of orange. And this is detail work. This is just getting in there and drawing what you see. Draw what you see in there. And it's pretty dark, some of these spots. And there's a lot of grill work, um, iron work going on in here. And so you can put the lines this way and that way. But careful. Be careful with it because this is important that you do the drawing right. Drawing number one. Number one important thing in your drawing, in your painting, is your drawing. Always has been, always will be, number one important thing to do. Drawing. And how you get there, I don't care. If you want to copy it and trace it and get the drawing that way, I don't care. It just has to be drawn right. Proportionately, you know, perspectively, all those things. It has to be looking like it is, like it, the, the right way. Unless you have a really, really abstract, um, loose style, then a lot of times it doesn't matter. It depends on your style. If your style is very loose, then yeah, go ahead and just make it really loose, but then it's not as important. I'm gonna put a little dry brush in there. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this orange under here first and then do the dark on top of that. And same thing with up here. I'm gonna take a little bit of this yellow orange and I'm just gonna kind of wisp it dry brush a little bit on here and I'll put the dark over that. Be careful again, I wanna make it nice this time. I wanna make it nice and skinny and really just go right up there. Take your time at this stage, you know. Um, this is details. You never have to, never, when we're doing the fine details, do you wanna do it quickly. It's so important that you know you do all the big washes first and get those out of the way. But when you get to the detail stage, slow down. Take your time, work it, and make it look like whatever it is that you want to make it look like. If you're doing a portrait, work hard on making it look like the person. Really get everything in that's supposed to be done. But you have to have all those other things done first. You have to have the big areas done first with nice, beautiful washes. And then the details come after that. Now, since I want this to be a little bit lighter on that side, I'm just going to use some orange, brilliant orange and permanent orange yellow. I'm just going to put that in down this side, make that lighter, but nice and detailed, nice and detailed. This side is a little bit darker, has more of a dark line. Make it nice and slow, nice and slow. Because in this, in this instance, this is very important that you make it look very almost photographic because it's the only, the only structure in your picture that is the center of interest. And so you really got to make it look good. There's not much more in this picture to make it look good. So you really have to work this, work this nice, get all the details. And if you do make a mistake in some parts over here, Use a circle of confusion and cover it up. <laughs> That's what I was telling the students today. Just cover it up. If you if you didn't do a good job, just cover it up with a circle of confusion. So here I'm just gonna put a little bit of this dark in there again. Now comes I'm just gonna use black for this, just really dark. And I'm gonna go in here and um, get some of the X's and and lines that go across. Slowly, just gonna go through this slowly. Make it nice. It's not as fun to watch when you do something like this because it doesn't affect a big, great deal of uh, area because you're just doing parts, but it's very important that you make them look good. That's one reason I could never do a hyper or um, hyper realism. Uh, it's just, you have to do this through the whole painting. The whole painting is this, 
going and detailing every little, you know, thing in the painting. You, you still have to do the part, the um, large stuff first, like big, big areas. But it's all basically pieces of the painting all come together to make it. And look at how I'm getting tired of this. I'm actually going faster now. I'm just I'm like, I, I, I just can't go slow and just do a nice job. I have to go fast and just get it done with because I get bored. I can only do so many of these little lines in there and then. Okay. There's the Eiffel Tower. And now look how dark it got. Oh, shoot. Okay, we're going to have to, when I look up at it now, look how dark it is. And I like that lightness that goes in there. So I will wait for it to dry. And then I'm going to scrub out a little bit of that too to get some of the lights back. Because now this area and this area are all dark. And I know it's part of the dark, but I like that red light. And I can even put um, opaque on there if I want to, if I feel like it. All right, circle of confusion time. And it looks like it's dry enough to do that in some spots. And so since we have to doing so much of it, um, I'm going to use a smaller. I got. I had. I cut this because we all. I had. I cut this right here because it was a big sheet that I put together. But we had some people use this sheet and had some people use this sheet today. I'm going to use a smaller. I'm going to use a smaller circle. I, um, I used a bigger one and it, it it looked too big. These look too big. They looked like again like balloons and so they they felt a little bit too big. Not my much, but they just felt a little bit too big. So I'm going to use a small one right here. And um, I'm going to follow what I see on the painting. And probably should work from top to bottom. Since um, that way I won't go over the ones that I do. So work from top to bottom. And then what I do is I p place it there. I get a magic eraser. Which is just um, like you get a magic eraser. These I get um, I get from Amazon. I bought a big bundle of them for classes. What you do is you wet it. You wet it and then rinse out as much of the water as you can. You know, I take it and squeeze it. You can't see me, but what I'm doing is I'm taking my water. I squeeze it in there as much as I can. So I almost, it's almost dry again. Just damp. You don't want to make it really wet because then it'll just, it'll get underneath the stencil. And I hold down like this. And what I do is I just kind of rub or blot. Just blot. You don't have to do much. Just blot it down. And I noticed that um, we were rubbing too much when we first started. And then I take some paper towel. Actually, this works out much better if you take paper towel whereas you're blotting it and then just take it away. And then I can just go over like that. And so there we have one circle. One out of the next hundred. <laughs> I like to wipe, on the, wipe down the, the stencil again. And there's another one like right over it. And so you can also use paper towel. Watch this. I'll use a wet paper towel a little bit. And I can even rub with paper towel. And this would be harder on arches because arches sucks into the paper a little bit more. And so it'd be harder to get it to come out. And so that one I'm not going to make totally all the way around. Maybe a little bit more than that. I'll, I'll just rub a little bit more, get it a little bit cleaner. Just rubbing, rub a little bit or blot and rub. Okay. And then we'll do one down here. I'm just trying to follow what I see there. And this now is going to get very boring for you because it's, I've got to do about 100 more. <laughs> and so um, let's try to do these a little bit quicker. And so I'm just rubbing a little quick. Rub, paper towel. Here's another one. Another one in this corner. And I'm following what I see up there because I like what I see up there. So why would I not? There's one. I don't have them placed exactly like they do there, but close enough. Here we have one right there. Blot. That one's half a one. That's fine. See how it already looks like it looks much better already. It actually looks like lighting. Now it's not the right color I want, but I'll show you how to do it right this time. Because last time I just used way too much paint and I made them way too dark. And so I'll show you how to make them a lot lighter this time. So let's see where else we got them. We got them right next to the thing. Now here, they have to be pretty light. So I'm going to wet it first. I'm just going to wet it. Flat it a little bit. Because you can also, if you rub too hard, you run, ruin the paper. And it gets it does the opposite. It makes it darker than lighter. <laughs> and you don't want to do that. And there's a bunch of them right here. Any questions?
blood, blood, blood. Always have your paper towel with you and the thing. And you don't have to make a whole circle on all of them. They can be where half of the circle is there. They can bleed in a way. So they're not perfect. You know, they're not perfect and they're all, they're all, all the way around white. You want them, even the, some parts can be lighter and some parts can be darker of the Boken effect or the circle of confusion, whatever you want to call it. This one I went over it a little bit and then there's a few more here. Now these I wanted to see if I can't get the orange back. See, I can, now because I put orange there, this is the effect I want to get. I want to see if they'll become that color. See, look at that, a little bit nicer. Yep, that's that's exactly what I wanted to get. And so I think in these areas, I'd possibly next time if I'm wetting it, put a little bit more of that color close to that and then I'll get a little bit more of that effect. And let's go and there's a bunch here. Again, sorry, this is gonna be kind of boring, I think, from this point on. Because <laughs> we have to just make a lot of them. <laughs> Nothing more boring than watching somebody do a repetitive object, a repetitive thing. Flat, flat, flat. Keep on going. Another one right here. I'm again, I'm again following what I see up there. Flat, flat, flat. The part with the paper towel is what I'm doing differently from what I did this afternoon too. It really helps a lot to right away put um, put your put and blot it with the paper towel right away. See how much you learn, and now it looks also three dimensional. It looks a little bit more that way, and so. A little faster here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's go over this side. And another thing I wanted to mention to you is do not use different size of the Boken effect. Make all the circles the same size. We've had um, we had a couple of people actually um, I've had that done in the past where I've had people use other sizes and it just doesn't look right it looks like a it looks like a carnival then like wonder bread it looks like a wonder bread package oh what i do there watch out because i'm uh, i'm picking up some dirty um i picked up some wet surfaces right here and my stencil and so i'm putting it elsewhere and so i'm just rubbing a dirty stencil in other places and that's not good either so isn't that wet this area might as well put that right in there right away Actually, another good thing about the um, about the paper towels, it dries your stencil right away on top again. So that's kind of good. Now I'll do a couple that are not quite as white. I'm just going to make that a little bit less flat off the edge. Wow, there's a lot here. <laughs> But, you know, and again, this is this is the kind of paintings I hate doing, too. The repetitive stuff, I don't like. I just, it's hard for me to do it because I just get so bored with it. <laughs> a little dark right there. We got to get rid of that. A little blackness. There's one right here. And maybe I have to stick with them that color because, I, well, I've, we'll see. We'll see. Because some of them are pretty light, some of them are less. You know, you gotta always switch it off a little bit. And this is the light part of my pattern. So I have to put them in because I don't have any light, other lights in there. So I have to put these in to get my lights, my light part of my composition working. And then the ones that are colored, that's fine. We can make them colored. Yeah, this is working much better than this afternoon. By having a darker background, more colorful background, now we get down to here, we're gonna get some, I get, I'm gonna get the color I want, the orange. And so that's what I was thinking. So I can get the orange color that's behind it. And so it'll look orange already. Let's switch this off. And then wait for these to dry before you go over other ones, like like going over it again, because otherwise they blend together. And we were blending them together because what we did is we put the color in afterwards. These are all white. And I put color in afterwards and they all blended together so they were not individual circles anymore. And so that's another thing I was doing. 
Um, Alt does Holbein Ultramarine Granulate as well as um, Windsor Newton French Ultramarine? I'm going to say no. Um, I think Holbein grinds their paints down so fine. They're so fine a, a, a paint that they don't granulate as much as that one does. But the French or the Ultramarine Deep does granulate, as you can see right there. That's ultramarine, and look at how it granulates. So it does granulate, but I don't think as much as the Winsor Newton does. Only because they're, I think they really have um, thicker pigment in there. They don't grind it as much, which is when it comes to the color. Then you get more color if it's ground, if it's ground finer. This one I'm not gonna make it as dark, or is it light? I mean, I'm gonna keep this one a little bit darker. Go here. Overlap a little bit. Blot, blot. And make an even darker one right here. Maybe I'll just use my paper towel and see if I can't blot it a little bit. See, even by blotting, that's what I love about this paper. It doesn't absorb as much, and so you can rub out things in um, when it comes to here. And look at this. We're gonna. Make this really beautiful light one right here. We're gonna make this really light. So I'm just gonna rub until I get it light, almost white of the paper. I know it rubs out my drawing and everything, but that's okay. And then we have a couple down here. That didn't go all the way around, but then we'll do another one right here. <laughs> is this boring or what? Tell me. <laughs> it's pretty obvious what I'm doing now. It's just getting in there and copying what I see. I'll have to color them. I will have to color them a little bit. I am picking up a little bit of the paper. If you rub too hard, you're going to pick up a little bit of the paper, which is not a bad thing. It's not going to be ruining or anything like that. And we're going to put one right here. As we're doing this in class, we're all talking about my, my workshops that I've been doing around the country, around the world, actually. And um, I was in Paris not to do a workshop, but uh, I had uh, really, when I, right, when I got out of, right when I got out of um, American Cameo of Art, I went to Paris for three weeks and just rented a car and drove around. And I have so many good stories of, of uh, France, except the only bad story was that the Louvre was closed on strike. They were on strike the two days I was there. And I was only there for two days until I went to Versailles, and, and so it was, um, <laughs> I always remember I couldn't get into the Louvre when I was in Paris. Right there. Let's do another one right here. I'm hoping um, to get back into doing some workshops overseas. Um, Hope, I mean, Dillman's was talking to me um, last spring about maybe doing a workshop in the Malfi Coast. And so we may have something coming up in the Malfi Coast to do a workshop there. So that could be kind of fun. Last trip I took with the um, Dillman's, with Dillman's, they uh, arranged everything was when I went to the Greek islands and what a workshop that was. That was an amazing workshop. Now see how it looks, it doesn't look, cause it's so light and bright. I wish I should have left it down a little bit because it should be a little bit, you know, darker, darker and not so punt in your face. And so I will take them down with the colors and I'll put them over and I'll show you in a second. I probably should have wiped them not so much and that way it would stay down a little bit on that end. Don't dab as much. We have some right here. And where else? Where else would there be some? There's a little bit right over here. Okay, let me show you how to make them dark now. Or, or brighter and darker. 
So what I'm going to do is these right here. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to negative paint around them. So while that's dry, while that's drying, let's get in our darks in here now. So let's do our detail darks. And that way I can also negative paint around these. And let me see. I didn't place these really well. These are too, I don't like that placement of that. So let's make one a little bit, where'd my pencil go? Make, let's make one of them a little bit, it's two, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's just in a row right there. Not a very good composition. So let's make this one a little bit more. And then we'll tone down a few of these. And let's go back into our dark areas and get our darks in here, really dark so that it pushes this all back. Oh boy, I didn't read. Okay, we got something going here. Oh, thanks, Chad, for um, letting me know that. <laughs> That's I, I I've noticed that um, the Ultramarine in um, Windsor Newton is very very granular. It's a real lot. I'm still waiting for. I'm still waiting for them to do um, granule or because um, the pigment that um, Daniel Smith has, they have some granular pigments that really granulate really a lot. They're actually made for that. Um, um, I think what's happening is that Holbein is, I think, making some of that paint where it granulates really, really well. I mean, it's made from rocks that granulate and it's just amazing stuff. And Daniel Smith already has them. Um, so if you want to try them, you can go to Daniel Smith and get that. But um, there also is supposedly some stuff that you can add into your paints that granulate it. I've had no, I've had any good luck with that. Um, but maybe you have, I, I don't know. You have to try it. I've been experimenting with opaques and so I'm doing a lot of gouache and so I could do that. I could make these circles with gouache too and then if you think about it, we can do that too. So now I see I made that a little bit darker. And notice that the, um, the, the, the lights really, again, that's a pattern so it should look nice. It should have a nice pattern of light through there. And so I, when I squint my eye, I look at the pattern of light to dark and that really needs to be looking good i mean it's it's the it's the light and dark pattern i've been talking like i said i've been talking about it forever these last couple of weeks and so I, i'm looking at it here i'm missing one right here I'm trying to make it see if you have a nice wash through there and again i still gotta get the lights back or the the color back because the color is not very nice in the, in this down here so let me really quickly wet i'm gonna wet one oh, shoot I just dripped a bunch of water on there so it'll go outside there so we can't do that one right now so let's do this one so what i'm going to do is wet it so i can float some pigment in there and i want a yellowish orange thanks barbie winsor newton makes granular medium i never found it did much but you should test it it's not too expensive yeah i, I have tried um the granulation that Windsor Newton has and I've tried the whole bind and neither one I've ever had luck with I don't know what I'm doing I don't think <laughs> I don't know if I should put it in there's no directions on it so you don't know if you put it into and use it as water I think that's what you're supposed to do it like use it as the water end of it so see how I'm going in here now I'm gonna just get some of the darks back and some of the color back and I will put dark between them to again make it look like you can see through them so i will be putting some darks in there around them like negative paint them because this area right here became very dark you know it should look nice and dark nice and colorful with the red the warmth but it should still look it should still look like the circle of confusion like they're actually lights and not dark objects on top that one got a little bit too too dark so I'm just going to rub it. I'm 
much time do we have? Oh, five minutes. We better hurry up with this color. I also want to get the dark spec in there. So, and also remember I said I was going to get some of the light back into the tower. But for that, I think I'm just going to go with opaques. I'm just going to go in there and take some opaque color and throw it back into here. A little bit of white, white and orange, and make it opaque. You don't have to do this. Like I said, you can go back in and so I'm just going to light it up. And again, this is opaque. This is opaque. This is a no-no. Many people think this is a no-no, which it is if you're entering into TWSA, but I don't mind it when I'm trying to make a something lighter and I already have the darks down. Circle confusion, circle square also look good that way. A little bit opaque, doesn't matter. And you just kind of have a nice light. See, I'm just really lightly wetting them and putting a little bit, not too much, not too, you don't want to overpower them. Just a little light hit of color in them is fine enough, especially with like the ones down here. I want to make them all look like they have a little bit of orange, yellowish orange in them. And then I've got to go take a really dark dark. I got to make it thick because it's, it's on a dry and I only have three minutes left. <laughs> so we're just going to go in here and do some dark negative painting. Because then this is the background behind it. And so we're going to get that back. And again, the thicker your paint is, the more it will not bleed when it's wet or damp. And this is negative painting. I'm painting the circular parts of the of the circle of confusion. Now that has to be darker. I may be going over a little bit here. Sorry. Okay. Let's get this a little bit darker blue through here. Let's get this a little bit darker in here. Some of these can be a little bit darker because they pushed back, right? They look like they're pushed back a little bit. So why not make them a little bit darker? Though I don't want them so dark that they're okay. There we go. Some parts you can see through them. So you can see the one part of that through the other one, you can see the light here. So they're not just solid all the way around. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to stop here in one minute, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all these and then just put a light tint to make them warm. And make these all warm and I'm just going to tint them just going to tint them so they're warm compared to the cool background Let's see if I just do this really quickly give them a color just give them a color and it's not going to hurt them you know I just it's a tint of color tint of warmth Gouache cover the dark, give a transparency. Would gouache cover the dark and give a transparency? When you're using gouache, it just covers up basically the transparency. Yes, it covers up the transparency and then it'll block what's underneath it because it's opaque. So it, it will cover anything up over it. Now, if you saw my video this week um, in my newsletter, this gouache really just is it's really powerful to cover up areas so i could use a, a gouache to basically cover up over on top of the blue and it would just cover it completely but that would be thick it would be a thick and and i don't want to make these look rounded i want them to look like they're flat and they just have to be lighter but i think it's not too bad 
this seems a little bit still not quite the way I want it, but I think we're done, guys. I may work it a little bit while I'm uh, when I get off of here, and what I'll do is I'll just again I'll just go in there and make it look like you can see through them, and once it's dry, I'll put little lines through them to show that they're not opaque things. They're not things that um, they're lights. They're shiny lights. Now some of these got a little bit too dark when I put that on there again. So see how dark they got. So I'm gonna go back in there and lighten those, and I may even have to use white when I give them back because I don't want to lose the lightness because these are my lights and so though I do want them to be a not a white color I want them to have a little bit of that glow of orangeness to them which I'm gonna do up here and what time are we, oh, we are one minute over that's okay we can be one minute over I'm gonna blot it a little bit okay. just make it slightly slightly another warm color and there's a few up here I've got to get. And I can do that while I'm gone. But anyways, I have nothing to toast you with. Sorry, guys. But much better um, this evening with it. Learn the lesson. Learn how to do these circle confusions. And um, again, if you're making them a certain size, make sure you make them the same size throughout the entire painting. Don't give yourself a painting with one big one and a small one. It looks weird. I can tell you. Uh, I tried it before with different circle sizes. Let me just take the tape off and we'll compare them and it's definitely much better and if i do another one i would probably be even better <laughs> you get better as you go along guys it's the way it is practice makes perfect let me just take this tape off of here so let's so here we have this evenings and then this afternoons we will show right next to it which i'm almost almost embarrassed to show you <laughs> So here's this afternoon. So a little bit of a difference, I think, right? <laughs> you learn every time. So guys, thanks again for stopping by. Now next week, I am out of here. I am up in Grand Marais. And next week will be... Next Thursday, though, I will probably do it in Duluth. I'll probably be in Duluth next Thursday. And then the following week, um, I'll be in Grand Marais doing the Plain Air Fest. And for that Thursday, I will not be doing a paint-along because I'll be out there painting along with a bunch of people and so the next week we will have a paint along um, but the following week we will not because again i will be in there and the following week after that i will be at dillman's teaching so um uh, i will have it i will have something new for them when i am up at dillman's and so we'll have a paint along then and we'll see okay all righty thanks again guys any last questions thanks patty for asking everybody to hit the thumbs up yes hit the thumbs up if you can um, it'll help me out a little bit here, and it's all good. Cheers with that, with the imaginary beer. Sorry, I didn't have a beer this week. <laughs>